Hey guys, so this is a really basic overview of a uh, solar MPPT charge controller system. Sort of, I guess, how to how to install it or what's required. Um, yeah, and uh, how it works. So we've got a solar panel over here. We've got our MPPT and our battery. I'm not going to go much into how to size your MPPT, but essentially that's a 100 watt panel. Uh, it's charging a 12 volt battery. So the maximum it's going to be putting out is about 8 amps of power, realistically, 7. So this is a 10 amp charge controller, therefore it uh, can ha quite easily handle that much um, power coming out of a solar panel. We've got a solar coming in and we've got it coming into a circuit breaker here. Now we're using this, this is a 10 amp DC circuit breaker, it do, it'll do two things. One is just act as a switch, let us control by turning on and off solar coming in and out. Re really handy, you should definitely have that. And it also, um, being a 10 amp circuit breaker, will protect cabling at um, anything more than 10 amps, it'll cut. It goes into the controller, positive and negative um, solar input there, positive and negative coming out to the battery. So it comes out, goes through a bus bar here, uh, into another circuit breaker. Now this just allows it, again, us to turn the battery, bloody motorbike, turn the battery on and off. It's going into a fuse. Um, before it hits the battery. The fuse is extremely important. Every system should have a, a fuse coming straight off the battery to protect your cabling. So the that's a 10 amp fuse in there. Um, your, your fuse should always be slot 90% of your current carrying capacity of your cable. So this, by right, should be around a 12 amp uh, current carrying capacity. So that will protect, yeah, that will protect your cables. So when you're installing your system, you should always double check with a voltmeter, put it on there and check that your volts coming in positive negative is right first and follow it around, make sure you got positive negative right. I've done that so um, it'll come up and it'll say 13.3 volts is your battery. Okay, so that's cool. I'd always do the same to make sure that you got panel is not back to front before you switch it on. Gets a good read, 17.5 positive. Okay, so that's good. Righto, we'll flip that on. Should come up here and just say, scroll through, 17.3 volts. Right, that'll start dropping as it starts charging. Um, there'll be no power coming through. You can check this 0.1 of an amp and 1.2 watts just because it's really overcast and it's in a shit position. It's just, or well, just for a demonstration. So yeah, that's uh, basically a very brief overview of how you'd set it up and the components you need. Down here there's a buzz bar, so from, from here you can distribute power out to other devices or whatever you want. This is coming off to a distribution block, so from here you can, again, yeah, power multiple, I think we've got there, six, up to six devices. These are slots for fuses so that you can protect all your cables coming off out to power whatever 12 volt device. You can have an inverter, you can have an inverter running off here, um, lights, fridge, cigarette lighter, whatever. Temperature sensor, that's an additional item that comes from EP Ever. It goes up, um, put it on or fix it somehow to near your positive terminal. That'll then monitor the temperature and what it does if it gets hot or cold or, or whatever temp, the MPBT will adjust its charging so that it's not putting too much charge into a battery if your battery is hot. Um, also if there's some sort of fault and your battery is, heats up, it'll just stop charging it um, in order to protect your battery from, yeah, from getting too much charge and creating a fire or, or, or whatever. Um, so one step backwards we should say is once you've turned it on you need to set the parameter for the type of battery. This is a LiFePo4, I'm not going to go in today how to set up the parameters for a LiFePo 4. There's four charging parameters set into a controller, flooded, lead acid, gel, sorry, flooded, sealed, gel, and a user profile. The user profile is the one that you would use for a LiFePo 4. Using an external MT50, you set the parameters that you would need for a LiFePo 4. Um, but I will show you how to set your battery. So hit set, go to battery, Hold battery in. Um, right, so we got user. You can scroll down through them all. 
sealed user, so we want user, hit set. You can set the amp hour um, of your battery size, so I already know it, I'm happy with that set. And then you can set your um, temperature if you didn't have a temperature sensor. Um, hit set and that's done. You can also set your load by doing the same, hitting set, go to load and then hold load in and change your load parameters if you wanted to run something at, at night like a light or you only wanted to run something during the day so power only comes out during the day. Yeah, um, but that as an overview is how a, a little uh, off-grid solar system works.